Yoel Judah says, Hasim Rockman Jr. could possibly stop Jake Paul by the six. Let's talk. Drew Titan Bronze on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. Uh, boxing scene. Link will be in the description. Joel Judah sees Rockman Jr. knocking out Jake Paul in the sixth round. Joel Judah, trainer, former heavyweight prospect, I've seen Rockman Jr. believes his man will score a knockout victory in the sixth round of his upcoming fight with uh, YouTube star turned boxer Jake Paul. The fight takes place on August 6th for Madison Square Garden, New York City Showtime. Pay per view will carry the event. Rockman Jr., 12 wins. One loss, six knockouts. The son of former heavyweight champion Hasim Rahman will be the first pro boxer that Jake Paul has faced in the ring. Five wins, zero defeats, four KOs. In his first of five outings as a pro, Paul defeated YouTube rival and, four, uh, and two former uh, MMA veterans and a retired NBA player. Those are his opponents, y'all. Rockman, who is a, a bigger, stronger, and far more experienced, represents a significant step up in class. While he is coming off his first defeat, the first defeat of his career in April, uh, for those of you that remember, it was against Tommy Morrison's son. Um, sidebar, Tommy Morrison's son won the fight by stoppage. Meanwhile, Jake Paul is fighting the man that lost that fight. But this still doesn't sound like a good idea. But let me get through this uh, uh, article. Uh, Rockman is very motivated to come away with the victory. Uh, I see Rockman Jr. winning in six rounds. He's confident and he's doing everything by the book. He wants this fight. Jake made a big mistake, Judas said. We've been working on everything, movement, speed, and mainly stamina. We know he has really good punching power and legs too. So if we get good stamina, we know we are good. The best thing about Jake Paul is he's probably going to be in great shape, but you're fighting a real boxer now. Good punching power and good combinations and someone who is not afraid of you and who is going to bring you the fight of your life. I've been with Hasim about four or five years. He's right there. He's where he's supposed to be for this fight. I see him three years from now fighting for, uh, for a world championship. That is the uh, article, and here's my opinion. Uh, link will be in the description. Here's my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think Jake, in my opinion, now here's his, his, his the disclaimer. This is boxing, and anything can happen. We know that. We've seen it over the years. But I think this is a bad idea. For Jake Paul, it's a bad idea, man. This was a bad idea. He shouldn't have did this. This right here, he shouldn't have did it. Okay. Um, if I'm not mistaken, okay, the NBA player wasn't taller than him. The, the, the two MMA guys wasn't taller than him. And his uh, YouTube rival wasn't taller than him. Um, I ain't got to say their names. You know who they are. Um, Hasim Rahman is a big guy. He's about 6'3". Right? And um, here's where I'm going to go with this. Um, Yoel Judah is absolutely right. This is a big step up. Hasim Rahman was raised in the gym. Boxing is in his blood. Um, salute to the champ and the chump. My brother Marco, who knows Hasim, uh, when he was in New York at the presser, he spoke with him. And him and Jake, uh, Hasim and Jake have history. And Hasim is on record saying, yo, look, I sparred with him, but I sparred him with one hand and it was easy. All right. Now, I respect to Jake for taking the sport seriously, but he's a late bloomer. Now, there's some prodigies in the sport that, that start late and they end up being champions, you know. But 
what's in question is is um, if Jake Paul is that guy. Based off of what I've seen, I don't think so. And that's just me. I don't think so. Um, another person I spoke to today via text was was not. <laughs> This was the person that I wanted him to actually fight. I was pushing for this fight, and that was Kendall Gill, retired NBA legend. Now, Hasim is 6'3". Kendall is all of 6'5", 6'5", 6'6". Okay? Hasim is a legit 6'3". Legit. And he's been training, and he's not out of shape. And Kendall, you know, told me over the text today, he said, man, he's going to knock the, 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 the he's going to knock the hell out of uh, 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 Jake Paul. He's going to knock him out. He's going to stop him. He was watching the, uh, the, 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 the sessions today. He was like, man, nope, Jake is going to make it. Now, you see this man right here, six foot five, you know, Kendall Gill is also for real in that ring. And he's been chasing that Jake Paul smoke. He's spoken to Steve Espinoza and everything else, and I don't know what happened. And being that that fight didn't happen, because, you know, I do remember Jake Paul saying if any of these NBA players want to step up and get knocked out, then come on with it. Jake Paul stepped up. He was mad at the Nate Robinson turnout. He stepped up. And crickets. Crickets. That fight could have been made, y'all. Stephen A. Snitch said he wanted that fight. Shaquille O'Neal said he wanted that fight. A lot of NBA players say, hey, man, Kendall Gill wants all the smoke, and he can fight. Crickets. So he picks on Hasim Rockman because he felt that he had a good outing with, with him against him in the gym or something. The story is Hasim fought him with one hand and was having his way with him. That's the story. And again, y'all, he's fighting... The guy who lost his last fight. Isn't that typical of boxing? Fighting a guy that looked bad in his last performance or lost in his last performance. But I still think this is a bad idea. And you see, what we, what we might see with Jake Paul, and again, disclaimer, he could go in there and land one and, and it could be a different night. But I really don't think so. It must be seen to believe, I'll say that. You know, um... I think this is a bad idea, man. I think this is a bad idea. Well, the fight's next week, y'all. The fight is next week. Um, and I, I, I really believe that this, I don't know if Jake scouts his own opponents or I don't know who told him this was a good idea. This was not a good idea, man. You see Kendall Gill right here with Hasim the Rock Rockman, former world champion. You know what I mean? Um, I just think this was a bad idea. Rock, I've seen Rockman is six two. He's my height. So Kendall's legit six five, and I think he, I think he'd have beat up Jake Paul. But since Jake didn't want that smoke, he's picking on Junior, and that's a bad look. It's a bad look. So I really, really think that for, for Jake to win. Bro, I don't know, man. I'm going to have to, you know, he's going to have to show me a different, he's going to have to show me a different side of him. Because I've seen could box. Never mind the fact that he lost his last fight. This man could box. Son of a legend. This man could box. And I don't think this was well thought out, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. So Yoel Judah, father of legendary Zab Judah, and Yoel Judah is a legend himself. Um, look, look, just look it up. I ain't gonna run it down. Look it up. This is a bad idea, man. So I'm riding with the boxer, the real boxer. And no disrespect to Jake, I'm just saying. You know, Hasim is a real boxer. Jake is a they refer to him as a YouTube star turnt boxer. So if he pulls this off and he starts, you know, showing us things in the ring that we've never seen or we didn't know he could do, I'll give him all the credit in the world. I will. I will. But I just really don't see this as happening. I don't see it happening. Look at the size difference. It's significant. All right? This is the first real boxer Jake is facing. And I think that six rounds, listen, keep your eye on round four, man. 
Now, again, disclaimer, it's boxing. Anything can happen. But if everything is fair, I don't see it happening. I heard something about some weight about two weeks ago. They were doing some funny stuff with the weight. I haven't heard about that in the next couple of weeks, the, the, the weeks following. But this could be a bad idea for Jake. I think it's going to be a bad idea for Jake. I think Rock is going to stop him between four and six. But keep your eye on round four. You're going to see the difference by the end of round two. But keep your eye on round four. All right? I'm calling it right now. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Bronx on deck. Move!